welcome back in last lecture we introduced the polymer science and also discussed briefly about the history of development of polymer science in this lecture i will give you some definition and terminologies related to polymers and also start the discussion of classification of polymers and these are the some of the terms which i will discuss in this class now what is the term polymer means polymer actually originated from greek words poly which means many and meros which means part so which simply in simple term means that a polymer has many parts in 1826 faraday was puzzled by the fact that ethylene and butene differed in their gas density but they are the same elemental composition and then the word first was the word polymer was first introduced by swedish chemist j j bergelius he considered for example that butene to be a polymer of ethylene and benzene to be a polymer of acetylene stordinger adopted this definition of bergelius and he described polystyrene as a polymer of styrene but he did not accept this definition for the products of polycondensation so later it was carothers in 1929 who gave a general definition of the term he defined them as substances basically the sample or is a collection of molecules whose structures may be represented by a generic structure r r r r where r r bivalent radicals which in general are not capable of independent existence later modern definition of polymers came and somewhat related to polymer you will always hear the term macromolecule though they are almost similar but there are a subtle difference between general understanding of this to term polymer and macromolecule now the modern definition of polymer is that it's a substance it's a collection of molecule or it's a sample which composed of molecules which have large repetitive sequences of one or more species of atom or groups of atoms linked each other by primary usually covalent bonds nowadays there are several researcher who actually also call macro structures which are developed or which are constructed by non covalent bonds like hydrogen bonding pi pi interact interactions and so on but in in the sense of polymer chemistry or polymer industry what we generally describe it is the molecules which are formed by covalent bonds so that's typically we call polymer so again polymer is a sample or a substance composed of molecules which are large molecules or macromolecules the word polymer and macromolecules are used interchangeably but macromolecules strictly means the molecules which a polymer is composed as i was saying generally polymer term is referred to a collection of macromolecules so macromolecules are being formed by linking together monomer molecules through chemical reaction a process known as polymerization now you also will hear simultaneously several terms like plastics rubbers or elastomers fibers you know this term plastics is very commonly used for describing polymers you know when people talk about polymers they generally refer to plastics and so on whether it is true that all plastics are polymer but not the reverse is not true not that all polymers are plastics you know this term plastics rubbers fibers they are actually have different meaning and they are defined based on their properties they they based on their behaviors mechanical behaviors 
and we'll I think we'll describe we'll describe it briefly at the end of uh, next lecture when we classify these things. Now, there are so many things we can describe as polymer: plastics, rubber, silk, DNA, proteins, enzyme, cellulose. You know, all are these. All these are all polymers. You will not necessarily that plastics are the only polymer, but these are all polymers. They are made of a large macromolecules, DNA, proteins, they are bio macromolecules, which are basically basis of our life. And they are large macromolecules, so they are polymeric molecules. So, polymeric molecules or polymers have very wide range of materials, properties and applications, wide range of physical forms, solid emulsions, foams, liquids and they exhibits, polymer ex exhibits wide range of physical phenomena. Example, polyethylene the most commonly used polymer used in our daily life, polymer, monomer, it is prepared from the monomer ethylene which is a small molecule and the gas is colorless flammable gas at room temperature, where it is polymer polyethylene structure is this composed of hundreds to thousands of ethylene units and molecular weight is 1500 to typically 1 lakh or more. It is a milky white plastic solid that melts at basically softens at 85 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade. So, polymer consists of large number of repeat units. We will describe what do we mean by repeat units now. There are two more terms we sh should remember macromonomer and telecalic polymer or oligomer. Macromonomers are large monomers containing repeating units and a polymerizable group. So, if I write a, a polymer structure and at the end I have a double bond or I have a functional group say COOH. Then, so this is a macromolecules, but it is polymerizable because of presence of this polymerizable group or polymerizable functional group at the end of this uh, chain. So, it is basically a macromolecular monomer or in, in short it is a macromer. The term telecalic is proposed for the polymer molecules or oligomer molecules processing two functional groups at the end. So, basically if I have a oligomer say COH uh, this side and OH this side or something else uh, double bond this side and a double bond this side, then we call this as a telecalic polymer, polymer or depending of the size we call this as a oligomer. Now, you are always hearing these two term polymers and oligomers. Obviously, the polymers or the chains which have not very high molecular weight they are oligomers. So, where is the cutoff between should I call a chain as a polymer or oligomer that depends on polymer to polymer. Basically, when we to have a useful property for a polymer sample, we need to have a minimum length of polymer chains or minimum molecular weight. If we can achieve a sample with that molecular weight, that size, then we call polymers. And if your sample has molecular weights or polymer chains less than that molecular weight, so that the sample is not useful, it does not have required properties, then we call this as oligomer. Now, there is an important concept repeat unit, structural unit and degree of polymerization. You will hear this term several times degree of polymerization in coming modules. So, that is why we should understand this term degree of polymerization carefully. See if I have a polymer synthesized from two monomers which are represented by 
two colors red and green then the polymer is usually presented as this now this is the way we present a polymer which is synthesized from these two monomers and this is the repeat unit of the polymer so if i give you specific example if i make pet polyethylene terephthalate plus ethylene glycol So, this would be my repeat unit. So, I can put n which is the number of repeat unit. Now, in this case as you can understand the repeat unit actually contained two structural unit. One structural unit from terephthalic acid, another structural unit from ethylene glycol. So, in this case the repeat unit actually contains two structural units and we we have so number of repeat units here n is twice the number of structural units so in this particular case the number of structural would be 2n and we call that number of structural unit as degree of polymerization or dp in this case so number of structural unit is dp so in this particular case case we write this as 2n okay so, when we are synthesizing polymer from more than one polymer, this confusion may arise to the readers and this is not only for readers, some actually some textbooks actually do mistakes. I have seen few textbooks which actually write that degree of polymerization is n in this particular case, but in this particular case n is not the degree of polymerization. 2 n is the degree of polymerization where n is the number of repeat units. So, number of repeat units is not the number of degrees of polymerization, but number of structural units are the degree of polymerization. So, if I take a simple uh, a, a polymer which is synthesized from a single monomer, then we just write this and the chemical structure would be given by this structure and in this case if I take a simple write a simple structure of say CH2 CH C <coughs> Cl that is my monomer and I get a polymer. So, in this case n is the number of degrees of polymerization number of structural units as well as number of repeat units. So, in this particular case when I have synthesizing a polymer from a single monomer then the number of repeat units is equals to number of structural units equals to degree of polymerization. So, in this case that is equals to n. Now, let me give you a few example and you can quickly do yourself that say if I have molecular of 1 lakh then what would be the degree of polymerization for this case. Now, the molecular weight average molecular weight is 1 lakh in this case where this the molecular weight of the repeat unit is 97. So, in this case degree of polymerization is 1 lakh divided by 97 which is turn out to be 1030 approximately. But in this case this repeat unit has molecular weight of 254. So, the structural unit average of structural unit would be half of this. So, in this case n would be in this case. So, 
I will write n first. So, n would be in this case 1 lakh divided by 254. So, degree of polymerization would be 2 into n. Now, in this case, this is synthesized from single monomer. So, degree of polymerization would be 1 lakh divided by the molecular weight of the repeat unit 113, which is turned out to be 885. So, these are the example to clarify the concept of degree of calculation of degree of polymerization. As I said, that degree of polymerization is quite important because we will come to this term very frequently in next lectures. Now, we will talk about skeletal structure. We the polymers can be of different skeleton structure. What do you mean by skeleton structure? It could be a linear polymer, which is represented by two chain ends. Now, generally we as you have seen, we write polymers like this having two ends or simply like this. Now, we do not you can ask yourself or you can ask uh, you can question me that why we do not write a polymer like this. Because most of the polymers are formed by atoms which are linked by single bond. Now, because these bonds are you can actually rotate the molecule around this bond. So, you hardly see that you have a straight line. Also, obviously, you cannot get any way carbon carbon bond length has a particular angle in any way, but even though we do not get a straight polymer chain like this, because this molecule can rotate around this single bond and as a result of this rotation, we actually get a flexible polymer chain like this. So, that is why you do not like stiff chains like this. Now, this is uh, true for that this is linear is true for many macromolecule, but there are also some uh, nonlinear skeleton structure. For example, linear we have seen and we can get also uh, cyclic ring like I have a polymer chain which are linked at the end. So, we get a ring structure for this and we can also get uh, branch structure. So, uh, you, uh, for example, if I have one polymer chain like this and I have a, a second uh, another small branch coming out or I can have a chain or I and I have like longer branch here like this. So, these are branch structure. Now, branch can be placed very uniformly also sometimes generates because of some side reaction and that happen randomly. And you can do post polymerization to put or place this bond uh, branches uh, in a very um, orderly fashion also. Now, obviously, you can understand that or you can appreciate that the properties of this branch structure and the linear linear polymer will be different because linear polymers can actually come close and make order structure very easily whereas the longer is the branch it will be difficult for the polymer chains to come closer and make a orderly structure or crystal structure so the so basically that is why you see that when you talk about polyethylene this uh, high density polyethylene hdpe are linear hdp are linear structure hdp are linear whereas low density ldp polymers 
because of they cannot pack well they have branch structure in the polymer chain. Now, we can also have this branched in a in a way that there is a sub branch from. So, I have a molecule like this and I can have I can have further branches I can have branches like this and which can also basically branch from sub branch which can actually branch further. So, so the branches are can possible to come out from the branches and in that case we call this as hyper branch structure hyper branch hyper branch structures and some cases some cases these branches are placed in very orderly fashion like I start from one branch and then two and this goes further another two this goes another two like this. Now, if this is done very orderly fashion we get a nice ordered uh, macromolecular structure and we get in this case drain rimers. So, branch can be having different types of molecules and when we have simple branch we also call we also call them uh, it is a graft we call them graft polymer and when we can also have other brass type polymers which will show which is you can I get idea. So, bond, uh, bonded these branches are bonded to the main chain at the branch points. So, when we have this uh, structure like this these are the branch points you can understand or junction points and these branch polymers are characterized by in terms of number of branches or size of the branches whether it is a short branch or a long branch and so on. Now, as I, I was explaining that you can have a um, kind of random branching of the molecule. So, we call this is a hyper branch which is much less less well defined structure and molar masses where the drain rimers are highly branched polymer with well defined structure and molar masses. Similarly, we can have brass polymer we have basically you can one main chain and then we have a very densely populated branch uh, branched uh, uh, structure. So, we call dense linear branches brass polymer and we can also have like one linear one linear chain and then maybe another another chain with branch very lot of branches densely populated branch is like the bra, bra, the brush we typically use for cleaning our uh, feeding bottles uh, for babies and all these things so basically this so we call this type of um, brass polymer as brottle brass type shape. So, depending upon the shape we actually call these uh, structures uh, differently. We can also have three now if the branches you can imagine if the branch when you are doing these branches and if these branches actually link between two polymer chains then what happened we get a kind of network structure where basically all the polymer chains are linked to each other. These are actually branch and these are main polymer chain I should have drawn it with different color but that you can understand. Uh, these are these are the main polymer chains and these are the branches. So, in that case we are getting a almost all the chains are linked with each other as a result we are getting a network polymer and in this case the molecular weight of the polymer is basically infinity because all the chains are linked with each other. Now, 
if I have one 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 uh, network like this and I mixed with another network this network if I if I actually uh, simultaneously we have another network I am showing the different color then we call we call this as a interpenetrating network basically two networks which are interpenetrated with each other. So, we call this as IPN interpenetrating network. And so, basically in this case as I drawn with two different color that these are two networks which are interlinked with each other and sometimes it is very useful we can actually get the properties of two network together. And, and sometimes what happen uh, we one of the network say I draw a one I draw a one network like this and I have a another linear polymer which are not cross linked say if I uh, use this color. So, I have a mixed with another set of polymers, but those are not linked these are not linked these are maybe I should remove this. So, those uh, so I have linear polymer which are not cross linked with each other. like this polymer they are not linked with each other chains are not cross linked. In that case I have one polymer which are not cross linked intermingled with another network. And so, we call this as a SIPN or semi interpenetrating network one network in another one is not network. So, in case of network each chain, chain is connected to all other by a sequence of junction point as we have uh, seen these points are called junction points and now depending upon and also this the middle portions are called cross link these are called cross link and the the chain polymer chains are called cross linked and the these are characterized by the cross link density which means the number of cross link per gram of polymer chain or per mole of um, um, polymer chain and we call that also degree of cross link which is related to the num number of junction protein per uh, points per unit volume and we just described what is semi interpenetrating network and interpenetrating network. Now, we will go to next uh, classification which is uh, homopolymer and copolymer. Homopolymers are basically a polymer der derived from one species of monomer and often used more broad broadly to describe polymer whose structure can be represented by multiple repeat unit of a single type of repeat unit. And if we have a polymer like PET which is which I drawn in um, few minutes back that is a also a homopolymer because I cannot make a polyester molecule just from either ethylene glycol or a terephthalic acid. So, in this case we should call this polyethylene terephthalate as a homopolymer not a copolymer because we cannot make a polymer independently either from Poly, uh, either from terephthalic acid or ethylene glycol. So, but if I use say a terephthalic acid and half of ethylene glycol and half of butylene glycol and I make a polymer polyester then I can call that as a copolymer. So, there is a little difference between uh, this copolymer and homopolymer. So, you should understand that and in the case of PET type polymer 
we call that ethylene glycol or terephthalic acid at structural units when they are in in the polymer structure. Okay, with this I should end this and then next lecture I will talk about copolymers.